Hello everyone, Don the Crown here, and I was in the middle of editing a video for my recommended builds for the upcoming server slam when I had to stop because there are literally so many changes in the data mine that we literally just unlocked because of the preload for the server slam that several of the builds are just completely wrecked. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through them real quick. Uh, we're trying to like I cover all of the different changes. There are a lot of changes for all the classes. I have it broken down into each class. You can check the uh, description below for timestamps. I also put a link to this document. Also, there's like a Reddit post with this document on it as well. So let's get into it right away. So Barbar pretty much the whole theme of this is there are a lot of nerfs for a lot of classes. Just let you know, a lot of things have gotten nerfed. I think uh, Blizzard heard that it felt like World Tier 2 was easy mode and not all that challenging for most classes. And uh, that gearing up you know, felt really too good. And so a lot of classes got a lot of nerfs to a lot of things. So just be ready for that mentally. It's not all bad, but there are definitely some nerfs. So starting off with Bash, uh, made it so that when you damage a stun enemy with Bash, it used to give you 5% Fortify. Now it gives you 10% of your base life as Fortify. So this is a little bit of a buff. Enjoy that buff while it while it's there because Hammer of the Ancients had its baseline damage nerfed just a little bit. At level one, it's going from 56% to 50, not really that much of a nerf. The overpowering uh, aspect here for the Hammer of the Ancients got a buff, but Barbarians really don't have a way to apply overpower to their skills very consistently, so it's not all that great. Furious Upheaval, which is the thing where it's dealing direct damage to an enemy with a skill that's not Upheaval, causes your next Upheaval to deal a lot of damage, up to 80%, is now reduced down to 30% damage. So that's a 50% damage nerf. Double Swing got a little bit of a buff, where now if it damages a stunned or knocked down enemy, it gains 25 Fury, which means, yes, I think that if you hit multiple... Uh, or you hit like an enemy that is stunned and knocked down and your fury cost is less than 25 because of cost reduction, you're probably gaining fury as you're double swinging, which I think double swing is looking pretty strong now comparatively. Whirlwind, they had said that they were going to increase the cost of Whirlwind uh, and increase the damage. All they did was increase the damage. So the baseline at level 1 went from 13 up to 17%, which is pretty good. Whirlwind got another buff in that, and like I don't understand why Whirlwind's getting so many buffs, but uh, it's seeming very strong for Endgame right now. It used to be that when it hit an elite enemy, you would get three fury. Now you're getting four fury, so it's going to be even easier to sustain. Also, when using a slashing weapon, there was two of the end nodes. Using a slashing weapon, Whirlwind inflicts 20% of its base damage as bleeding. That has been increased to 40% which really is not all that much damage because you're going off the base damage of Whirlwind, not the total damage, like not like 40% damage, but that's still not bad. Uh, Challenging Shout and pretty much all of the Shouts got nerfed in some way, shape or form. So Challenging Shout has had its damage uh, reduction scaling tuned down. So as opposed to getting 5% per level, now it's only gaining 4% and its duration has been reduced from eight seconds to six. Uh, the Challenging Shout node that gave you 50% of your life as Thorns, that has been reduced down to 30%. Uh, Iron Skin got a little bit of a buff. It had a node that gives it, so it makes you always guaranteed to absorb 5% of your maximum life. Now that's 10%. Uh, next up, Iron Skin got another little bit of a buff, where Iron Skin used to grant you 9% of your base life as Fortify. Now that's 15%. And that amount is doubled if it's used below 50% life. And Iron Skin really just gives you a shield based off how much life you're missing. So it makes sense to use that at low life. So getting 30% of your base life as Fortify could be pretty good. A nice reactive skill as opposed to a uh, non-reactive skill with Challenging Shout. Uh, they also went and they butchered the Thorns build that people are really enjoying. So uh, basically... Outburst here gives you flat thorns value and scales up, but then also gave you 20 thorns for every 25 bonus maximum life you have. And now it's going to be 10 thorns, so half as much thorns, 
for each 50 bonus maximum life. So basically you're getting half as much thorns for twice as much life. So it's a 75% nerf, which is a pretty big nerf. It still gives you the same flat amount, which is kind of okay, but that's a pretty big nerf. The next thing tough as nails here, uh, this used to increase your base thorns by 60%. Now you note that all of these things are going up to like level 10. Uh, a lot of these things don't have levels normally beyond level 10, but there probably are ways to increase the level of your passive skills in some way. So don't worry about that. But basically this is going from 60% increased thorns to 9%. So that is a very big nerf. However, when enemies hit you, they take an additional 10% now of your thorns is bleeding as opposed to 1%. That's still not all that great unless you're getting a lot of thorns from other sources and uh, losing <laughs> losing 51% thorns increases a pretty massive drop back, which kind of sucks. Uh, Rallying Cry got a nerf as well. Basically, it's going to give you less flat uh, resource generation. It's going to start off at 40%. I believe this scales up to 56% now, as opposed to, I believe it was 70 before. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 70%. So that kind of sucks. The duration hasn't been changed though, and some of the other shouts have, obviously. Uh, also, the tactical rallying cry, which gives you flat fury, and then an additional 50% resource generation has reduced to 20 flat fury and 20% regen. So it's definitely not as an attractive node as it was before. We also have Martial Vigor, which used to give you 4, 8, 12% damage reduction against elites. It's now 3, 6, 9. Note that Barbarians did get flat DR against everything. And all of the like DR nodes in the tree kind of got knocked down for that. So overall, you shouldn't feel any less tanky once you have these points. And you'll feel more tanky in the beginning. Uh, Warcry. Uh, this also got, uh, I believe, a little bit of a nerf in terms of duration. So this used to last eight seconds on you. Now it only lasts six seconds and it no longer lasts four seconds on allies. Instead, it is three seconds. Uh, the power war cry used to uh, scale up the buff to 30 percent if six enemies are nearby. Now it is just going to add an additional 10 percent to the buff instead. And so... I think even at level five, that's actually a buff now. I think this is actually a positive thing because at level one, two, three, four, five, you're going to be at 22%. So it'll be 32.5, but it is a nerf if you are not leveling up Warcry. Uh, Mighty Warcry now gives you less base life as Fortify. Also kind of sucks. Uh, Booming Voice, the increased duration of your shouts has you know also gotten hit as well. The, the top end here is 24% as opposed to 30%. That's not massive nerf, but still does hurt. And then the shouts uh, cause enemies to do less damage for five seconds. That DR got cut in half, which does suck. <laughs> it's you know, a, lot of, a lot of nerfs, especially for shouts. There's also a damage reduction for berserking. The DR got cut. The when you gain while you fortify above 50% of your maximum life, you deal additional damage. Those values all got cut as well from like 5, 10, 15 to 4, 8, 12. And then the increase the damage reduction gain for fortify got a cut from 369 to 246. So yeah, a lot of nerfs for barbarians damage reduction, but that's kind of expected because they said that was gonna happen. And a lot of nerfs for its shouts. I was really surprised to see Upheaval get absolutely blasted, but it was doing quite a bit of damage. I think at the end of this, Rend is still looking pretty good. Uh, Whirlwind is looking better than it did before in a lot of ways. Uh, Double Swing is also looking better, but there are some additional nerfs for Barbarian in the Codex, which we'll talk about later in the video. Uh, some pretty sad changes too. Next up, Druid. So Druid, I think, got a little bit of buff, a little bit of nerf. Uh, first, right off the gate, Earth Spike got a buff. Now it's going to generate a little bit more spirit. It's going from 8 to 10, and uh, the damage didn't get changed at all. The Fierce Earth Spike, which gives you Fortify whenever Earth Spike 
damages enemies who are stunned, immobilized, or knocked back. That got increased from 2.4 to 4%. Maul got its spirit increased from 11 to 14. So you're seeing lots of spirit generation has been improved on a lot of the skills. And then uh, more fortify for when an enemy is hit by Maul. So you have a higher chance to knock down enemies when you hit with Maul. And then they reduce the range of Maul with the Fierce Maul node. Next up, Storm Strike, which was like hands down, I think the crowd favorite for spirit generators got a little bit of a nerf going from 15 spirit per hit to 14. And I think that kind of makes sense. It always is, uh, it was kind of insane before you got the best spirit generation, it chained to enemies, it applied vulnerable, it gave you damage reduction and it immobilized enemies on chance. Uh, it's still probably the best, but yeah, it has some a little bit of a challenge to that throne now. Ball, for example, now does got a buff, so now it also generates more spirit. So basically, almost all of the builders, with the exception of uh, here the wind one is called, does more spirit generation. Landslide got kind of a surprising nerf. This went from 112 at level one to 75% damage. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a big drop off. And then at level like five, it's doing 105, whereas before it was doing 157. So it is a sizable damage drop, probably like 50%, maybe more. And uh, yeah, that definitely is going to hurt landslide builds. But I think landslide was looking to be pretty ridiculous as it, it was anyways. So hopefully you'll still be in a good spot. Overrise also got nerfed. So if you're sitting around waiting for your overpower it by remaining healthy as a bear, you have to wait 12 seconds as opposed to 10, which I think kind of sucks. I didn't really enjoy this particular playstyle all that much on Druid and having to wait an additional two seconds. Really, I, I don't like it at all. Uh, Shred, on the other hand, got a buff. Now the first attack also dashes to enemies. So you can make it so all three swings do dash to enemies, which I think makes Shred pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Shred, though, did get a nerf in terms of its healing. Before it was healing you for 2% of your maximum health if you struck an enemy. Now it's only 1%. Lightning Storm has had its damage increase, which I think could be cool. Lightning Storm, I definitely see some builds where people were popping off a little bit. And then Wild Impulses got nerfed. This is the one that makes it so your core skills cost more but do more damage. Basically, every single class that has something like this, that got nerfed. And so the cost got reduced and the damage got reduced. So, yeah. Also, Abundance, where its basic skills generate more spirit, that got nerfed as well. Uh, predatory Instincts, where its critical strike chance against close enemies, that got nerfed. It went from 369 to 246. The debilitating roar uh, actually got a buff where now it used to make it so that enemies around you for four seconds would do half damage. Now they're doing 70% less damage, which makes this a lot more appealing to take, especially in group gameplay, because it applies DR for everyone around you that's getting attacked by those enemies. Debilitating roar now also slows enemies for 65% uh, for its duration as opposed to 40, which I think is pretty good. Cyclone Armor had its damage reduction cut in half. So before it would give you 20% just generic non-physical damage reduction and you could make it also do physical with an aspect and apply to your entire team. And now that is going to be starting at 10% as opposed to 20%, which I think is good. I think as it stood, uh, if you didn't have a Druid with the Cyclone Armor aspect in your party, uh, you're probably trolling in endgame. Now you're probably still not troll probably still trolling if you don't have it, but it's not as big of an impactor for sure. Especially because no other class has anything like this that is just pure passive. The damage from it did get buffed, but I don't think anybody's really using Cyclone Armor for the damage. Uh I guess clip it if I'm wrong. Uh next thing, they made it so that the slow from enemies that are knocked back by Cyclone Armor lasts a little bit longer but you know that doesn't matter too much now all of the companions so ravens vine creeper and wolves uh they all like do 
more damage with their active skill, but their passive damage didn't get really changed at all. Uh, kind of a spoiler, I guess, for the Codex part. The Stampede aspect got its damage reduction reduced massively, but the active part of all of these companions got their damage increased by three times. So it's basically like you have the Stampede aspect just for the active part, so like your wolves jumping on enemies, but they aren't doing insane damage all of the time. Vine Creeper also got changed to, I believe, Poison Creeper. Uh, and yeah, it's just a different name. Next up, this expo Elemental Exposure. Uh, they changed it so that the Lucky Hit chance is reduced. This is the thing where your Storm skills have a chance to make enemies vulnerable for a certain amount of time. Now, instead, it's going to have a 10% chance Lucky Hit. So it's going to be kind of rare for it to proc off. Uh, Boulder, they went and they changed the description a little bit so that now it basically tells you that it repeatedly knocks back enemies, which it wasn't telling you that before, but nothing else has changed about it at all. For Trample, Trample for some reason, they kind of made it slap. So Trample, it used to at rank 1 do 25% damage. Now it does 75% damage. Uh, and also it continues to do 45% additional damage if enemies are knocked into, ter into terrain and it stuns them. Well, now it's going to do triple that base damage. So instead of 25, now it does 75. So if you knock something into a wall, it's already doing over 100% base. And then the next thing makes it so that Trample gets an additional 150% uh, damage multiplier. Now the bonus is reduced by 50% for each enemy hit after the first, but you're going to do quite a lot of damage the first thing you charge into, especially if you knock it into a wall. I think it's like actually four, I think it's a 420 multiplier, like not even memeing, it's a lot of damage. I could especially see in PVP, people just getting absolutely nuked by getting trampled into the wall and losing like half of their health or all of their health, who knows? So I think that's going to be kind of neat. Sad that it's kind of their movement skill, can't really hit very many things, but it could be a good single target thing. Uh, the next thing is basically for while you remain in Werebear for X amount of seconds, your next skill will overpower. They extended the time for this for you to get that overpower. And last but not least for Druid, the Storm skills grant two spirit and deal 20% increased damage when the damaging a vulnerable, mobilized, or slowed enemy. That has been changed to one spirit and 15% increased damage. So definitely a little bit of nerf there as well. So yeah, that's Druid. Uh, basically your generators have been made slightly better besides Storm Strike, which got a little bit of a nerf. Uh, Landslide got a little bit of a nerf. Actually, Landslide got a big nerf. Uh, Pulverize got nerfed a little bit. Shred got a little bit of a nerf, but a little bit of love. Lightning Storm got some love. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to see what's going to come out of this. Your companion is doing a lot more active damage. So when you actually press the button, I think it's going to be pretty good. Although I know a lot of people like that, like companion play style where they were wrecking all of the time. It seems like uh, Blizzard doesn't want us doing that. Next up, we have Necromancer. All right, Necromancer is next. So, uh... I would say that there is some pretty big nerfs in here and also some strange buffs. So first off, uh, Decompose basically is going to generate one more essence per second, so six to seven, and that's pretty much it for that. Bone Splinters got gutted. If you don't know, Bone Splinters used to do an insane amount of damage. It would do like 66% inc damage just from hitting all three splinters on the same enemy. Well, now it does 8% damage per splinter, so that's 24% at best out of those just three. And so that is a massive damage decrease. It is like almost a third of the damage it did before. And uh, I think that's kind of fine because I don't really believe that your generator should be like a core damage skill, but still pretty big change for the uh, overall skill in general. Next up, they nerfed the Enhanced Bone Splinters. So it, has, it used to have a 30% chance to fire two additional projectiles while cast at 50 or more Essence. Now that's 25%. And 
And then Bloodlance got a big damage buff. Big, big, big damage buff. This could possibly be an insane single target machine now. So we got 50% damage buff, the baseline percent level one. It's going for 45% up to 67%. And that is huge, absolutely ginormous. And then while well, at least two enemies or a boss are affected by Bloodlands, you gain 15% attack speed and the cost is reduced by two. Now it's the exact same thing, except it's minus three essence. So it seems like you're potentially just going to be able to just spam Bloodlance all day, which I think could be a really cool play style. And uh, hopefully we get to see this a little bit. I know that I played this in the beta and I didn't really feel like it did enough damage. So hopefully this time around it's a lot more powerful. Uh, just like uh, the Druid, the core skills uh, do more damage, but cost more has been nerfed. So it, the cost has been reduced, but also the damage has been reduced. Uh, Corpse Explosion, basically they have nerfed the damage significantly. At level one, it used to be 75%. Now it's 50%. So it's just a 50% damage nerf on Corpse Explosion, which uh, sucks, especially if you really like that Corpse Explosion gameplay. A Corpse Explosion deals 10% uh, multiplier against enemies that are slow, stunned, or vulnerable. And uh, now that's 8%. So that's a 2% there, but that's stacked up to, I believe, 30% if you hit a slowed, stunned, vulnerable enemy. So now it's, you know, 6% reduction. Next up, Fueled by Death. It, uh, I believe they nerfed the damage here. So you deal increased damage for four seconds after consuming a corpse. Now it is a little bit less, so it was 4812, now it's 369, and the duration is 6 seconds as opposed to 4. Uh, next up we have Skeletal Mages, they got a flat buff, so this used to increase their uh, damage in life by 15, 30, 45%, now it is 20, 40, 60. So that is good, uh, definitely very good, it'll help keep those Skelly Mages alive and pumping out the damage. Uh, Decrepify got some really weird uh, changes. I'm not really sure if some of this is accurate because basically it was in the how much less damage enemies do. Sometimes it would be like at a certain level it got nerfed and then the next level it got massively buffed comparatively. So like I don't think it's all that big of a difference between the, you know, the two, especially because at level one it's still 20%. Uh, and then Blighted Corpse here. So Corpse Tendrils has a 20% chance to spawn a Blood Orb when damaging enemies. Now it's 30%. So it's a small buff. And then this Bonded in Essence, this got its text updated to clarify the skill effect. So before it said every 5 seconds, your Skeletal Priest healing will heal your skeletons for 20% of their maximum life. Now it says every 5 seconds, your Skeletal Priest healing will heal your skeletons for an additional 20% of their max life. And so this is very good clarification because I thought it was procking off automatically. It was not procking off automatically. It just buffs uh, the healing that pops off if you activate it uh, every five seconds. Although I don't know if there was a way to tell what that actually was. So yeah. Next up, Death's Defense. Uh, so your minions can't lose more than X amount of health. It used to be 75, 50, 25. Uh, now it's going to be 75, 60, 45. And I think the reason they made this change is that there's uh, been some indicators in terms of uniques and other stuff that there are going to be items that increase the level of certain passive skills. And so if you got one more level in the old death's defense, your minions wouldn't take damage anymore. So now it requires quite a bit more levels for that to happen. Uh, and I guess that's okay. I guess infinite minions doesn't sound all that bad coming from D3, but you know, in D4 it could be an issue. Uh, and then Golem Mastery, they actually buffed Golem Mastery again. A lot of these like mastery uh, things got buffed and so increases the damage and the life, I believe, of the Golem from 15, 30, 45 to 25, 50, 75. And then Book of the Dead, golems in general had their damage nerfed. So before they were doing like, I believe 35% base damage. Now they're doing 26.9% base damage. 
and then that's it pretty much for rogue uh pretty much it got a, a little bit of changes in terms of some of the stuff uh corpse detonation corpse explosion got nerfed obviously massively uh bloodlands got big 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 buff hopefully people will get to try this out this weekend and uh yeah all right next on to the rogue so the rogue the rogue got some big nerfs uh in terms of its most popular skill i guess you could say twisting blades but twisting blades did not get nuked in a way that's going to make it unplayable so twisting blades uh advanced twisting blades made it so that when the blades return your active cooldowns are reduced by one second per enemy they pass through up to three seconds now it's your active cooldowns are reduced by a quarter second per enemy they pass through up to three seconds so if you're still like pulling them through a whole buttload of mobs, you're still getting that massive cooldown reduction. So while mapping, you're getting the same feeling, except against bosses, you're getting like, you know, one quarter of that, which I think is totally fine because against bosses, you're basically just nonstop jamming, twisting blades in the enemies and you're just flying out of the boss nonstop and you just didn't have cooldowns. You didn't have cooldowns at all. You could use your movement skill whenever you wanted. You could just spam your ultimate all day and you just didn't have cooldowns at all. And so I think that this will actually be a pretty good, you know, middle ground here. You'll still be able to get your cooldown reduction against multiple enemies because you're probably hitting more than three enemies anyways. Maybe not 12 enemies, but you're definitely hitting like three or four uh, plus enemies. And then against bosses, you're not going to feel like you have infinite cooldowns especially when one of those is a damage reduction cooldown which i think is not that big of a deal penetrating shot uh it had deal used to deal 20 percent increased damage per enemy it pierces now that's only 10 percent uh reactive defense uh basically you gain damage reduction when inflicted by crowd controlling effects that dr increase has been increased basically from four and a half nine thirteen and a half to six twelve eighteen so for PvP, this is probably looking pretty good. That looks like up to like I think almost like a 5% uh, DR buff at level 3. Next up, countering a smoke screen. Uh, this basically is like a lucky hit thing where dealing direct damage to enemies affected by smoke grenade has up to a 25% chance to reduce this cooldown by one second or two seconds if they're vulnerable. Well now it's three seconds if they're vulnerable. Concealment, basically uh, this makes it so that you oof go invisible you vanish and you have an advanced form of stealth which is not removed by taking damage it also makes you unstoppable gives you 25 percent move speed well now it's 30 percent move speed and then on top of that uh concealment that skills that break stealth makes enemies vulnerable for three seconds now it's six seconds so this is pretty good i was running concealment with the penetrating shot with the uh, arrows that shoot off to the side and uh you know i was applying vulnerable and getting crits this way i believe and uh this will make that vulnerable last even longer poison trap now has a 30 percent chance to reset your impugnment skill cooldowns when activated as opposed to 20 percent and then countering dark shroud it used to be way of two active shadows of your dark shroud to get 10 percent crit now you need four of them to get eight percent crit so that's definitely a little bit of a nerf the movement speed you gain from Dark Shroud Shadows has been increased from 3 to 4% per shadow. Uh, there's also your Agile using a cooldown increases your dodge chance by 369. Now it's 4812. Uh, Mending Obscurity uh, gives you wall stealth. It used to be heal for 1, 2, 3% of your maximum life per second. Now it's 3, 6, or 9. Uh, next up, Poison Imbuement actually had its damage increase. So at baseline, it used to do 70% of the damage that the skill did. Now it does 100% of the skill damage. I think is a very good change. And I think Poison Imbuement actually was kind of slept on, especially for like world bosses like Ashava. Definitely does more damage now than uh, the Shadow Imbuement. Next up, Blended Poison. Critical strikes with poison imbued skills deal 30% increased poisoning damage. Now it goes to 75%. So that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good indeed. Enhanced shadow imbuement. So 
So you have 25% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies infected by a shadow imbuement. Uh, I believe they changed this down to just be 15% critical strike chance against injured enemies inflicted by the shadow imbuement. So it's a little bit of a crit strike chance nerf. Next up, we have precision imbuement which pretty much makes it so that uh, imbued skills have increased critical strike chance. It used to be 5, 10, 15. Now it's 3, 6, 9. And then last but not least, Adrenaline Rush. While moving, you gain increased uh, energy regeneration. That energy regeneration, I believe actually is to stay the same. I just didn't cut this off. They probably just changed a little bit of wording. There's a lot of little changes in this document where they just changed some capitalization or change some tags for example rogues here lost all of the movement tags on all of their stuff it's just not a tag anymore for rogues and so this is an example of something that could change in that way and that's it for rogues as you can see rogues kind of really didn't get the nerf bat as much as other classes did uh twisting blades pretty much got a little bit of nerf uh we got a little bit of penetrating shot nerf the aspect for that kind of got nerfed a little bit as well which we'll talk about in the codex part. And uh, I believe that some of the Dark Shroud stuff got nerfed as well. But for the most part, Rogue came out of this probably looking the best so far. And a uh, little hint, definitely the best, better than Sork. Uh, and so I believe that Rogue probably benefited the most by not getting it as nerfed. Uh, next up, Sorcerer uh, has a lot of changes. Sorcerer, I think, uh, probably has some of the most generic buffs to some skills that weren't being used and a lot of the popular stuff got nerfed. So yeah, it's kind of good, kind of bad. So first off, uh, we'll talk about Spark, Enhanced Spark. So each time Spark hits his primary target, it has up to a 20% chance to hit up to three additional targets dealing damage. Uh, this chance has been increased to 40%. So Spark is like a little bit of a better clear skill for hitting multiple enemies all at the same time. Glinting Spark, Spark deals or grants 2% increased critical strike chance for three seconds, up to 10%. Uh, that duration has been increased to five seconds, but the critical strike chance is capped out now at 8%. So this does allow you to kind of like take more advantage of this without having to spam Spark every three seconds. Which I think would just been an annoying place out of basically have to give spark, other skill, spark, other skill. Uh, this allows you to have a little bit more freedom in casting. Uh, charge bolts had their damage increased. So baseline, they went from 17.5 at level one, and that's times five sparks uh, to 28. So that is like uh, over a 50% buff to charge bolts. I'll have to see if this is any good. But at point blank, at level one, you're hitting for like 140% of your, of just damage, 140% damage. This makes it a really interesting skill in terms of just single target, close range stuff. Now, I know what you're thinking, Sork plus close range is kind of scary, but don't worry, the Shock Sorceress has a lot of stuff in its toolkit to make it work. Uh, enhanced Charge Bolt, so hitting an enemy with it at least three times with the same chat, the same cast of charge bolt releases a lightning nova dealing 15% damage to enemies around them. Now it's 24% chance, 24% damage. So shotgunning one enemy will give you even more benefits. Incinerate also had its damage increased baseline level one. It was doing 9% damage. And then its baseline burn was, uh, I believe going up to just 49%. Now it's doing 12% damage with its burn going up to 66%, which is, uh, I think, pretty good. Uh, Incinerate definitely was bad, though, before. So we'll have to see how it is now. Uh, it also had its enchantment buffed. Now, I kind of expected the enchantment to be a little bit more buffed than this, but the enchantment effect was every 20 seconds, a serpent spawns and incinerates enemies for 6 seconds. Now it's every 18 seconds, a serpent spawns and incinerates for eight seconds. So a lot more uptime, but still I expected a little bit more of a buff for this considering how strong enchantments are. Chain Lightning on the other hand, uh, has its base damage reduced by I believe 14% of what its base is. 
So we're going from 42% to 36%. That's a 14% drop there. I don't know why I did the math on this one, but not all the other ones. Uh, and it also has one less chain. It was chaining six times normally. Now it's only chaining five. And uh, kind of sucks. But chain lightning, I think, was ridiculous. And I kind of wish that the one change that would have made to this is that would have made it so that uh, at level one, it chained like two times and level two, it chained three times and level four, it, like it just increases the chain length because getting it at level one is just casting it and just everything on the screen gets hit. Uh, felt pretty ridiculous. Next up, greater chain lightning. So when chain lightning bounces off of you, it used to do 25% more damage from that point forward. Now it only does 10% more damage. So that definitely hurts the single target ability of chain lightning. Uh, next up, Ice Shards. So they had a 15% chance to ricochet to another enemy. Now it is a 40% chance. Uh, Elemental Dominance makes it so that your core skills deal increased damage when cast above 50% mana. Now that number has been reduced from 4812 to 369. <coughs> next up, Flame Shield. Flame Shield has kind of gotten a lot of heat because it is a really powerful super immunity button where you basically just keep moving around doing all your damage and stuff uh and its cooldown reduction was kind of problematic so i believe at like level five it was like three seconds uh long now that scaling has been drastically reduced as opposed to gaining 0.2 seconds per level it's only gaining 0.1 which i think is pretty good because at max like level 10 it could last at 3.8 seconds and there were some builds that could have it have a less than three second cooldown, making you immortal. Uh, now it doesn't even have a three second cooldown. The burning damage that happens while you're in flame shield has been increased, but I don't think people really cared about that too much. Uh, it's just a little bit of a nerf to this. Note that the enchantment effect, I don't believe has been changed at all, which I know is a little bit of a hot topic in the hardcore community. I managed to get two fire puns in on that one. And uh, we'll have to see what Blizzard does about this like cheat death enchantment. Next up, Frost Nova. Uh, this basically has had, I believe, its duration increased. So you unleash a turn of frost, freezing enemies around you for two seconds. Now it is three seconds. So yeah, that's like just a change with that. I think that's pretty good. Like a longer freeze is a good thing, especially because elites didn't seem to get froze frozen for all that long. In enhanced Frost Nova has gone from every time you kill enemies its cooldown was reduced by two seconds up to six seconds enemies that are frozen by it obviously now it's cooldown by one second up to a maximum of four seconds so this does prevent you from kind of spamming uh frost nova non-stop however yeah i think this is a good change i think that without cooldown reduction already while i was playing at like level 25 I felt like I was casting Frost Nova a lot, especially when I was playing in a group. I felt like I was just Frost Nova, Frost Nova, Frost Nova. And so this should help out with that a little bit. Uh, Mystical Frost Nova makes it so that enemies are vulnerable for four seconds, and that was increased to eight seconds against bosses. Now it only lasts six seconds against bosses. So a little bit less consistent of vulnerability against bosses. Uh, Ice Barrier was giving us a shield for six seconds and absorbing, uh, you would get 10% of your damage dealt added to its barrier. Now it's only 5% of its damage dealt added to its barrier. And uh, I think that's totally fine. The shields from Ice Barrier were really, really strong. For ice Armor. And uh, if, you, if you had Ice Armor up, you pretty much were just immortal for that time as well. So combined with uh, the Fire Shield, you just have a lot of options that were really, really strong. Mystical Ice Armor can kind of continues this trend where damage against vulnerable enemies contributes 100% more to Ice Armor's barrier. Now that is 50%. So once again, they're kind of like nerfing down the amount of barrier you're going to be getting from this, which you'll see is somewhat of a theme. Next up, Hydra. Yeah, Hydra got nerfed really bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hydra was ridiculous. Let's be first off. Hydra basically was single-handedly or quadra-headedly 
clearing the entire game without any problems, which is a problem for a skill that doesn't really cost much and you can just spam it all day. Uh, so it goes from doing 30% base damage uh, with each of its heads at level one to now 12% base damage with each of its heads. It also lasts 10 seconds as opposed to 12 seconds. So you will have to upkeep it a little bit more. I personally didn't have too much problem keeping it up uh, for the 12 seconds before. So 10 seconds should be fine. Ice Blades also got nerfed. Basically the entire Conjuration Suite got nerfed except for the lightning part. Ice Blades basically, uh, they do less damage than before. So they went from doing 30% uh, at level one to 23% now, which is another big nerf. Uh, they can still apply Vulnerable at a 30% chance for two seconds, but the enchantment for this got wrecked. It used to be for every 20 seconds of cooldowns you spend, you spawn an Ice Blade on a random enemy. Now it's 40 seconds. So I made a video about please nerf this OP build. This is what got nerfed basically. Uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. And so you used to just be able to spam cooldowns and have tons of ice bl blades flood the air. And yeah, it does, doesn't exist anymore as much because ice blades cooldown is reduced by one second for each time it hits a vulnerable enemy. Now that's 0.5 seconds. So the CDR got cut in half. And then the next thing, 50% of enhanced ice blades cooldown reduction is applied to your other skills. Now that's 20%. So as opposed to each hit giving you half a second cooldown off of everything, now it's a tenth of a second cooldown off of everything. So, you know, <laughs> that's oh, four fifths of the value there is just gone, uh, which I think is fine because a build where you literally at level 25 with no cooldown reduction gear at all and just sit there and spam all your buttons. And one of those buttons makes it so that you are immune to damage and crowd control. And it has a sh longer duration than its cooldown. Uh, I think that that's just busted and broken. And it'd be very unfun, especially to play against in PvP. But also be very unfun to watch your friends just walk through the hardest content in the game, being completely immune, but probably having to buy extra keyboards due to spamming their buttons all day. But yeah, so the Ice Blades cooldown build is dead. Rip. Next up, align the elements. So this basically is the thing that made it so that you gain damage reduction against elites for each second that you haven't taken damage from one up to 50%. And it used to be five at level one, and now it is 1% at level one, up to 40%, down from 50%. So note that this also means like if you have a barrier up, you don't lose the DR as well, but this is going to be a lot harder to keep up. So basically Sorks aren't going to be running around with 50% DR at all times. Next up, uh, using a cooldown used to give you 10, 20 or 30% of your maximum life as barrier for five seconds. Now it still gives you 10, 20 or 30% of your maximum life as barrier. However, it's only for two seconds so yeah that's definitely not as good but you know i didn't really expect this to survive either because this is kind of ridiculous although without the cooldown reduction build being in the game anymore i think that this is a little bit more fine than it was before next up is meteor and i actually have the end game build planned for meteor and so seeing that it got a 60 percent damage buff uh Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. I am almost positive that the end game meta for Sorks for beginner group will involve lots of meteors. Almost positive. I'll put a video probably uh, closer to the launch about this particular build, but I believe that there is a fire build out there that is going to rain living hell down upon Sanctuary and uh, the fact that they just buffed it by 60% uh, doesn't hurt at all. Uh, lastly, Deep Freeze, uh, it got its damage doubled. So you used to continually deal 12.5% damage. Now you continually deal 25% damage. 
Which I think is good because before you really weren't doing any damage. It felt like you are kind of just stalling for cooldowns. And I would always cancel this early. So there's that. So basically Sork uh, is a rundown. A lot of its skills that were less used like Charge Bolt, Incinerate, Meteor all got buffed. Frost Nova kind of got a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a nerf. Chain Lightning got a nerf. Uh, Hydra got big nerfed. Ice Blades got big nerfed. And some of the shielding and damage reduction stuff of Sork got nerfed as well. So they're not like super tanky caster anymore. Lastly, there are some Codex things that got updated. Now, some of these are unique, so we haven't even really seen these really in the game. But there's a lot of dirty, dirty data miners out there like myself who have been looking at them and trying to like figure stuff out. And uh, we're just going to go through them real quick. And the first one is pretty painful because it is a rather large barbarian nerf. And it's the aspect of limitless rage or probably aspect of I wasn't very angry to begin with. It used to be for each point of fury you generate while at maximum fury, it gives your next core skill up to 4% increased damage to a total of 120%. Now it is 2% damage up to a maximum of 30%. So if you put this like on your two handed weapon, now that caps out at 60% as opposed to 240%. So that is a very painful nerf. That is a 75% nerf. Uh, this was one of the things that was giving barbarians a lot of damage in endgame. And so this is very, very sad. Next up, we have Aspect of Berserk Ripping, uh, which whenever you deal direct damage while berserking, inflict 22 to 40% of the base damage as additional bleeding damage over five seconds. That's been reduced down to a maximum of 30%. This is still going to be incredibly OP, probably super meta. Uh, look for a build for this one as well. Aspect of Anemia, dealing direct damage or direct damage against bleeding enemies has a chance to stun them for two seconds. It's gone from 31 to 40 to 20 to 30%. So that kind of sucks as well. It means lucky hit anyways and very conditional. So this wasn't super duper amazing. Our first unique, uh, Ramadani's Magnum Opus. Uh, using this weapon increases the damage dealt per fury you have it used to be from 70% to 100% and now it is I believe 10% to 30% so yeah I mean this got pretty nerfed especially because you lose fury to fury every second that kind of sucks I'm assuming that this weapon is absolutely cracked though I'm assuming that every single person that had this was doing way more damage than they should have and that 30% is a lot more fair because I can only imagine that having like 100% increased damage at 100 fury and like you can get more than 100 fury pretty easily in the paragon tree uh, having this list like infinite multiplier probably was not a good thing next up we have druid changes the uh, aspect of the stampede here got pretty massively changed so you can still gain one additional companion, but your companions no longer do 100 to 150% bonus damage. Instead, it's 10 to 20%. But remember that all of the Druid companions active skills got tripled in damage. So it's basically like you have aspect of the stampede for your active skills at a two hander maxed out at all times. And this is just a little bit of extra on top of that, but you're like, werewolf companions or whatever aren't going to be like slapping non-stop with big damage you will have to use the active skill to do damage the tornado aspect storm chasers aspect no longer seeks up to five targets instead it'll only be three uh next up we have storm storm skills have a 15 to 25 percent chance to grant 10 spirit your base storm skills are also werewolf skills that has been changed to now it's only uh, four spirit that they get with the lucky hit, but they're still counting as storm spirits. I'm pretty sure that this is also a unique. And so this isn't something that we even got to play with. I've heard that this is very strong though as well. Next up, accelerating aspect. I think this is one of the aspects that kind of went a little bit under the radar in the beta weekends, but this is definitely something I had on my two handed weapon 
for my Twisting Blades Rogue. And so it was giving you 20 to 40% attack speed when you crit with your core skill. And now it's down to 15 to 25% uh, for, five, for five seconds. So the attack speed is nerfed, but the duration is buffed, which I think is pretty cool. They give you more opportunity to benefit from this. And honestly, having 80% attack speed on a two-handed weapon uh, was pretty stinking ridiculous. Uh, next up, we have the aspect of intercom. Uh, this basically, when you stand still, you do more damage. It still is basically uh, doing up to 30%, but you get to that 30% faster. On the worst roll, it's going to take you, I believe, six seconds. And on the best roll, it's going to take you three seconds before it was 10 seconds to three seconds. The increased damage way of a barrier active has been reduced as well. 23 to 33 to 15 to 25. Uh, distant enemies have a 15% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. And you do increase damage to stunned enemies. That's down to 8% chance to be stunned and only 20 to 40% increased damage against stunned enemies. Uh, that's that kind of sucks. <laughs> I don't like. I didn't really think that this chance to be stunned was all that impactful in the first place, and for them to cut it in half, my only guess is that in maybe like PvP or something that this would eventually proc no matter what in a melee versus range style combat, and those two seconds of stun would be enough to turn the tide, and so this felt super mandatory in PvP. Although it kind of still feels somewhat mandatory in PvP to catch people that are hiding you away. Next up, we have basic skills gain increased attack speed, uh, going from 23 to 33, down to 15 to 30 percent. This isn't really all that much of a nerf on the top end, but in the bottom end, it does kind of suck. And I'm pretty sure that this is on the codex, so it does make it worse if you're putting it on the codex. Edge Masters was one of the most popular. Uh, things for all classes, basically skills deal increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit when you have full resource. And so it's going from 24 to 34 to 10 to 20. So that's like a 50% plus nerf. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of stinks. A lot of the like really good aspects I feel like have kind of gotten nerfed, kind of making it like them just less appealing. I think maybe they heard that people were like didn't want so much of their power coming from legendaries uh and this is kind of like what they have changed next up we have aspect of the expectant which may so attacking enemies with a basic skill increases your next core skill by five to ten percent up to thirty percent now it's only up to well it's up to fifty percent now it's only up to thirty percent and so a little bit of a damage nerf there as well which kind of stinks uh, next up, we have Smiting Aspect. There's increased critical strike chance against injured enemies. And then while you're healthy, you have increased crowd control duration. And that's been dropped down to 10 to 20% against injured. I wasn't like, and then you also have uh, only 20 to 40% increased crowd control duration. I don't really know why this is getting nerfed per se, but yeah, here we are. Next up, we have Exploiter's Aspect, which I believe just had its wording changed. So you have 20% increased crowd control duration and 20 to 50% increased damage to unstoppable enemies. Now it says you have 20% increased crowd control duration. While enemies are unstoppable, deal 20 to 50% increased damage to them. So it's a little bit better wording. Uh, next up, a unique that a lot of people are excited about, uh, the Melted Heart of Selig. It gives you 100% extra maximum resource in addition, when you take damage, drain three to six resource for every 1% of life you would have lost instead. Now it's only 30% maximum resource, and that drain roll goes higher, which is worse. So three to eight. Obviously, you'd want a three roll if you could. Speaking of OP uniques that people are really looking forward to, Harlequin Crest got buffed? So before we were pretty sure that it was going to be plus four to all ranks, but I think the initial version of the data I saw on this didn't even have the damage reduction anymore. Well, oh, it had damage reduction and the damage reduction went away and then the damage reduction came back and now it's gone from five to 8% to 
to 10 to 20 percent uh which i think is nuts it is gonna be very difficult to justify not wearing this hat if you can find it supposedly incredible rare <laughs> incredibly rare uh next up we have starlight aspect so you gain 10 to 20 of your primary resource for every 20% of your life that you heal. Now it is for every 25% of your life that you heal, which is a small nerf. Next up, this is a unique. Each consecutive core skill cast reduces the resource cost of your next core skill by 5 to 10%, up to a maximum of 30%. This has been buffed to 8 to 12%, up to a maximum of 40%. Uh, Meteor is probably going to really love this one. Next up. The Aspect of Might, which was super popular. Uh, basic skills give you 25% damage reduction for 4 to 8 seconds. And it's been cut down to 20% damage reduction for 2 to 6 seconds. Next up, we have while you have a barrier active, there is 20 to 30% chance to ignore incoming direct damage from distant enemies. And that's been cut down to 7 to 13%, which is like a 66% nerf. I don't really know why they felt the need to nerf it this much but that is a big nerf uh next up effects that heal you beyond 100 percent life grant you a barrier up to 50 to 100 percent of your maximum life that lasts 30 seconds this is unique called temerity it has been nerfed to uh up to 40 to 80 percent of your maximum life for eight seconds so this is a massive nerf i'm assuming temerity is super rare in the first place it seems incredibly strong, but yeah, this is a big nerf. Uh, Ghost Walker, Walker Aspect got a little buff, which is pretty nice. While unstoppable and for two seconds afterwards, you gain up to 25% increased movement speed, 10 to 25. Now it's four seconds after. So basically Druids and probably PVE with uh, Earth and Bulwark are just going to have this 25% move speed all of the time because they can go unstoppable with Earth and Bulwark pretty regularly. Next up, the contentious aspect of the Explosive Mist has gotten nerfed. Uh, basically, it used to be like whenever you pop corpse with Blood Mist, uh, the cooldown of Blood Mist would go down from half of a second to one and a half seconds. Well, now it's 0.2 seconds to half of a second. So basically the uh, old top end, the new top end is the old bottom end. So that's kind of bad. Hulking aspect, uh, this is kind of massive nerf. So your golem has a, used to have a 10 to 30% chance to reduce its active cooldown by two seconds with a five to 15% chance to spawn a corpse each time it damages an enemy with its normal attack. It's gone from that 10 to 30% to one to 4%. That's like nothing <laughs> and now has a half or two percent chance to spawn a corpse like i don't know why you would use this this seems very 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 bad unless this is procking off all the time because you're hitting tons of enemies or something but yeah it seems very bad next up we have trick shot aspect so this makes it so that whenever penetrating shot damages an enemy two additional arrows split off to either side these used to do 30 to 40% damage, and now they do 10 to 25% damage. And they, these don't split. And so that's like a little bit of a nerf. Penetrating Shot was just like full clearing packs though, especially with Shadow Imbuement. And so the nerfs aren't all that big of a deal. Next up, Twisting Blades gets another little nerf. Its aspect basically made it so that you, when the blades come back to you, they would deal 10 to 20% of their uh, return damage per hit. And then based on the distance they traveled, the orbit would increase up to 40% of the return damage. Now it's 10 to 15% of the return damage and then 20 to 30% at the top end there, which kind of sucks. But, you know, it, Twisting Blades did seem a little bit overtuned. Next up, Energizing Aspect, damaging an elite enemy with a basic skill generates five to eight energy now it is three to seven energy so a little bit of nerf as well the hydra aspect got nerfed a, a little bit just a tiny bit you can still have one extra hydra but its duration is reduced by up to 30 percent used to only be up to 25 percent which is a tiny 
tiny, tiny nerf. Uh, next up, we have Aspect of the Unwavering. And so this makes it so that taking direct damage has a 5 to 10% chance to reset the cooldown of one of your defensive skills. Now this makes it so that it's a 2 to 6% chance to reset the cooldown of one of your defensive skills. So that's also nerfed. And that's pretty much all of the changes we know about right now. Now, I know that if you've actually been looking through the data mine stuff, you're probably like, but Don, there were a lot of flat codex things that like made it so that when you kick an enemy, they explode for X amount of value. And those have all been changed to percentages or zeros or something. Well, it seems that whatever uh, terms of calculation that they have on the back end to figure out what those numbers are, uh, that that has changed and something with the data mine makes it so that we can't necessarily see it just yet. And hopefully you have updated information for that. We'll probably just be able to see them live in game. And I'm kind of hoping that they are scaling those a little bit better. So I didn't include any of those on the codex because it just says zero. Uh, I don't think that's going to help you all that much make any decisions. Uh, but I don't think that they've been overly nerfed. We'll have to find out though this weekend. I hope you guys are looking forward to the server slam event. I'm probably still going to put out a video talking about the builds that I think are still going to be good. I do need to do a little bit of an update to it, though, because I had the cooldown Sork on there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that I don't think is going to work anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did in the comments below. Let me know what your worst nerf best buff is in the comments and come by the stream. Thanks so much.